Hi class, today we're going to be working on ISLM ASAD models. So we're going to be doing a few examples in this video and then I'll pose some questions to you and then in the next video I will answer those example questions. So the first thing we're going to do is draw out our graphs. So we're going to have ISLM, remember LM curves slopes upward, lofty mountains and icy slopes. Those are just, that's just a quick way to remember which way they slope. And then we're going to put in the aggregate supply, aggregate demand. So remember that the short run aggregate supply is P bar, P bar because it, the prices are sticky. We're going to bring down our equilibrium and put our long run aggregate supply or LRAS. And then our aggregate demand slopes downward and cuts through the middle of those, but my writing is not the best today. So all this should be one point. On our y axis, we have price, and on our x axis is output slash income. So this is y1, p bar 1, and r1. So these, these are the two graphs we'll be working in, and we're going to be looking at what happens in the short run and the long run today. So over here, we'll be doing our calculations slash notes writing. Our first example will be what happens if the nominal money supply increases. So that's M increase. So let me just change a color, we'll go to red. And let's talk about what happens in the short run. So we know that the money supply increase happens in the money market. So let's doodle a quick money market. M over P, M D, M over P, and R. So we have our equilibrium. And we know if our nominal money supply increases, our real money supply will increase and thus shifting M over P to the right. Okay, so we know that this lowers the real interest rate. So let's bring this back to the ISLM model. If our real interest rates lower due to a change in the money market, then our LM curve will shift to the right, or LM2. Okay. So from here, we know that when we shift the LM curve to the right, our aggregate demand will also shift to the right. So let's bring down our Y. Ooh, that's a little crooked, but we're just gonna work with it. So our output tells us where our aggregate demand curve will shift to. So ooh, there we go, pretty close. So that is our aggregate demand curve too. Now this is all in the short run. So our, in our short run, we know that prices don't move. They stay the same. Our price is still P bar. We know that our interest rates have fallen and our output has risen. Okay, so now let's work in the long run. So we're, let me change the color, how about blue? So our long run will now be blue. So, what changes in the long run is the question we're going to have to ask ourselves for each of these problems, and that is prices. So remember, in this Keynesian ISLM model, prices are sticky in the short run and can only change in the long run, which is why Keynes says in the long run we're all dead and that we need to use monetary and fiscal policies to speed up this change in the economy, to slow the fluctuations in the business cycle. Let's not just wait for the long run for prices to change. We need to act now in the short run, which is why we have policies like a money supply increase. Okay, so in the long run, prices can now change. And we need to look at the graph with prices. So let's draw another money market graph. 
M over P, M over P, money demand. So here, we need to realize that when prices change, we're always going to be looking back at this money market. So the first, in the short run, there could be a change from either the money market or the goods and services market. But to get back to the long run, we're always gonna go look at this money market because that's where our prices are. So here we know that prices will have to change to get to the long run. But which way would prices change, up or down? Well, let's look at our aggregate supply, aggregate demand curve. We know that this is our long run aggregate supply. So in the long run, we want to be back on this line to Y1. And in order to do that, we need to follow our aggregate demand curve to where it crosses the long run aggregate supply. So here, our prices will have to rise to P2. Or I guess here would be P3, because our short run prices stay the same. Okay, so they'll have to rise to P3. And in order to do that, we need to look at this money market. So if prices rise, our real money supply will fall. So M over P2. And what happens when the money supply falls and our interest rates go back up? Well, we're just going to shift the LM curve back to its original position to make sure we're at this long run aggregate supply. So now we can look to see what happens in the long run. So prices, we know rose, real interest rates went back to where they started, and then our output went down to where it started. So in total, we know that prices rose, nothing happened to our interest rates, and nothing happened to our output when we combined what happened in the short run and the long run. So that was just a pretty straightforward example of how the aggregate supply, aggregate demand works with the ISLM curve. So now let's do another. In this example, we're going to see what happens when wealth increases. So let's draw it out in black. So our wealth, oops, sorry, wealth decreases. Okay. So we have our ISLM graph, our aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph. We're just gonna copy it over real quick. There's our aggregate demand. Here's our long run aggregate supply. And remember, my P bar is my short run aggregate supply. It's just easier to write P bar. Prices, interest rates, and output. So I'm gonna do my best to line these up. There we go. Icy slopes and lofty mountains. And the last thing we'll do is put on our equilibriums. Y1, R1, and P1. So, Let's look at the short run first. In the short run, we know that a wealth decrease is within the goods and services market. So let's write out E equals C plus I plus G. We know that our wealth is within our consumption. So if our wealth falls, our consumption is going to fall, and then our expenditure will fall. So this will cause an IS shift to the left. I'm so used to pausing in class that it's hard not to pause here. Okay. So now we know that if we bring this down, we see a drop in our output. We see a drop in our interest rates, and we know that at this point is where our aggregate demand curve should fall into equilibrium. So let's draw that out. And our prices will stay the same. So P1 will equal P2. 
So in the short run, we know that interest rates fall, output falls, and our prices stay the same. So as I said in the previous example, what do we have to do to get to the long run? Well, in the long run, prices adjust. So here, let's look at what happens to the price. So if our aggregate demand falls because we have a fall in our output slash income, then we have to follow this line to the long run aggregate supply, which we will follow it down till we reach the long run aggregate supply line. From here, we know that our economy to reach the long run, the prices will have to fall. So prices will need to go to P3. And like before, we know that prices are in our money market. So let's use our money market to figure out where our curve should shift to, to reach equilibrium. So we have our R1. We know that if prices fall, then our whole fraction will increase because if the denominator falls, then the whole fraction will become larger. Okay, so then we're going to draw in our new real money supply, M over P2, and we see that there's another fall in interest rates. Okay, so we know that if interest rates fall, our LM curve will have to shift. And we're going to shift it back to the long run aggregate supply line, which comes all the way up and crosses the new IS curve right at the blue spot. And then our LM2 will move to the right. So in the long run, we see prices fall, real interest rate fall, and our output fall. But in total, after the short run and the long run, we see lower prices, lower interest rates, and no change, oh, hold on, and no change in our output. So a policy that somehow decreases the wealth will decrease our prices in the long run, decrease our real interest rates, and then have no change in the long run on our output. Okay. Now, if you have any questions with these, please just let me know or come to office hours and ask some questions. Okay. So let's work on one more. I mentioned this before in the previous videos. What happens if productivity increases? Now here, let's draw out our graphs. Our aggregate demand. aggregate supply, short run aggregate supply, P bar, and our long run aggregate supply. And remember, these will all cross in the middle. So P1, prices, Y, Y1. Bring this up. Our middle point's going to be right there. Icy slopes and lofty mountains. Okay. So here in this problem, we have a productivity increase. And this could be something like the Eisenhower interstate system or the personal computer revolution, the IT revolution where internet came about, computers came about, um, anything that would increase the overall economic pro productivity in the country. So we know as productivity increases, we'll see a price decrease. So we can look at our money market, MD, 
M over P. When prices decrease, our money supply increases. So we'll see a shift to the right in the money market, money supply. And we're going to say, okay, this shifts the LM curve to the right. So this is LM2. Now, when we talk about productivity, it doesn't just change in the short run. Productivity changes or in the overall economy changes the long run aggregate supply. So here we know that our new output would be at Y2. And this will be our completely new output since the entire economy became more productive, which means our new long run aggregate supply will be long run aggregate supply two with a higher output. So these prices will drop to reach this new long run aggregate supply and the aggregate demand curve. So P bar two, this is the only time prices in the short run will fall because it's the new short run. So here is the original short run. And then after productivity happened, we see a shift to the right in the long run aggregate supply because the overall economy now can produce at Y2 instead of Y1. And the new short run aggregate supply price will be at P2. Okay. This will become what I call the new normal. So now if something happens to this economy where let's say the wealth changes, then we'll be working at the long run aggregate supply two, short run aggregate supply two, and the original aggregate demand. We'll be working with this equilibrium to start. Okay, so productivity, or if overall input prices change, these are the two things that will shift the long run aggregate supply curve. And these are the only two things that will shift the long run aggregate supply curve. The other questions I could ask will shift either the money market or the goods and services market. Okay, let's work on getting a try it question going. So the first try it question will be, what happens if we go into a recession? So the government decides it needs an increase in the money supply and an increase in government spending to get through this recession. Now this is pretty similar to your homework and it uses, uh, Keen these are Keynesian stabilization policies. So Keynesian stabilization policies are driven by the demand for liquidity and the advice for a recession in the Keynesian model is to increase government spending, decrease taxes, and maybe use money supply or monetary policy to change and lessen the fluctuations in the business cycle, okay? So try it, let's work through this question here. Question number one and question number two will be what happens if money demand decreases? So here's two try it questions, one and two, that will be answered in the next video. Okay, I hope everyone has a great day and I will see you in the next video.